Hi, I'm Pete Henry. I'm a recent graduate from the University of the West of England studying computer systems integration, formerly computing for real-time systems. Our course is mainly to do with integrating hardware and software on various platforms, uh, mainly Linux. Uh, my dissertation has been on the Parallax Propeller uh, demo board and I'm going to give you a little walkthrough and talk through uh, what my dissertation has been about. This is the demo board with the parallax propeller chip running on it. So this little chip here has eight 32-bit microprocessors. It has 32 kilobytes of RAM and 32 kilobytes of ROM which contains things like uh, sign tables and log tables for uh, fast mathematics and uh, a character set for uh, a built-in font. So the board also has PS2 keyboard and mouse connectors. Um, it's got uh, an audio jack, composite out and VGA output and there's a microphone here, just this little black dot, and uh, this little pillar is used for ground for, there's eight I.O. pins that can be attached to this breadboard here, and I've just got this button which uh, does nothing. It's connected via USB to my computer, which is running Linux. My chosen IDE for this project was Brad Spintool. This is uh, the Kalimba, which came into my possession about a year ago, and it's a pretty nice instrument, it's nice sounding and it's pretty hard to make a bad noise with it. But unfortunately it was out of tune when I first got it, so I was struggling to think of uh, an idea for my final year project. And my professor, Dr. Rob Williams, who's the leader of the course, he suggested that I use the demo board for, for my dissertation. And so this is one of the objects that uh, comes with the demo board. It's microphone to VGA. Uh, it's written by Chip Gracie, the designer and inventor of uh, the propeller. Basically what it does is it takes microphone input and displays it, similar to an oscilloscope on the screen, as you can see, that's my voice going up and down. And you can fine tune it for instruments and whatnot. So if you were to whistle, you can see a sort of sine wave on the screen. So this is the layout for the kalimba. These these little metal things are called tines, T-I-N-E-S. As you pluck them, they're supposed to come up with a particular note, and you can see on the screen as I pluck it, nice little sine wave coming up. This was the original. Uh, objects written by Chip Gracie and you can see here how he's got sample bits here and this number here representing the sample rate that the object is, is taking microphone input so by changing this number you can change how fast or slow it is so let's uh, let's push it push it to a max of uh, say 9 and uh, put that on the propeller see what that looks like um, it seems to be a lot faster in the sense that uh, there's not very high definition for the lower frequency, so... Yeah, so that's what that looks like. There's an attenuation feature as well, so you can adjust how much the, uh, the wave is being compensated. So the, this is the sort of maximum messiness of the output with all of the noise of the microphone in there as well. So if we just try and stay silent, you can see the noise there. So the attenuation brings that down a bit and decreases the uh, amplitude of the waveform. And the way he does it is uh, quite an interesting little little bit of uh, niftiness in terms of the propeller. The constants up the top, bits and averaging, uh, then use this nice little bitwise decode instruction. So I saw this demo and it uses the 512 by 384 bitmap VGA object and it did quite a lot of stuff that I wanted it to but it I had the idea of uh, turning it into a, a frequency counter. So I modified it for my own purposes. And instead of having the bitwise decode for the bits, and I've, uh, I've introduced this constant called sample rate, which takes the current clock frequency and divides it by a thousand times another constant called kilohertz. So this will allow easy changing of this number uh, to get the desired uh, kilohertz sampling rate that I want. I've kept averaging and attenuation. Averaging is used for centering the, the waveform in the middle of the screen by offsetting it and centering it, so it's quite useful. So yeah, I'm gonna run my version of the demo and it looks it looks pretty similar. So we have the standard waveform, but what I've done is I've introduced quite a lot of other elements to it as well, so down here we have note detection uh, subroutines. So 
quite a lot of uh, floating point maths to figure out when uh, a frequency that's coming in, what note is coming out, and there's quite a lot of other extra uh, assembler in there for checking whether the wave has crossed zero, and that uses a Schmidt trigger, uh, which creates a threshold above and below the line. Um, it's to try and get rid of the extra noise that you would get if you had like lots of zero crossings. You would get an, an inaccurate frequency reading, but if you have a, a threshold so that as the wave goes above and below it, then you trigger that as a zero counting, then you get a much more accurate reading. As I've been talking, there's probably been yeah, notes coming up on the screen, but uh, just to give you a little bit of background on what we're looking for, the western octave is logarithmically spaced up the scale, so what that means is that every time you go up an octave, you double the frequency. It sort of looks like a curve. And what I have here is a picture of the kalimba's standard tuning. So we have B3, which is the lowest note that we start on, and then it, it counts up incrementally either side. So this would be C4, uh, this would be C5, and this is C6. When I was trying to fine tune my application, I was, I was using Audacity to generate a, an A note and trying to pick that up on the output from the serial console. So just to give you some demonstrations, if we treat the lowest note as B, and then it goes D, F sharp, A, which is the standard A. If you play that close to the, the microphone, you should see on the serial output, it's, uh, it's a fairly close to an A. If we do one note down, which should be F sharp, So I use this as the back end for um, a frequency counter graphical interface. So the idea is, it's exactly the same zero crossing counter, but it's just got this user interface on the front. So the idea is, when you pluck a, a tine and look for a note, it'll show the percentage off that that note is. So I've, I've used this to tune my kalimba. So there's only one or two notes which are slightly off. Let's see if I can mount the camera somewhat on this armrest. I'll sort of show it incrementally up. That was a bit sharp. a bit flat. So the reason that I wanted to build this is because tuning the kalimba is quite a tricky deal. This bar holds them down quite tightly so you need a pair of pliers in order to get enough grip on the actual tine to change the angle of it. And that's a bit closer. You see it's got that uh, rather nasty resonance on it, so just moving it along this top edge can, can have quite a significant difference. Less resonance, but now we're flat. There was another application which I decided to go for, which uses the FFT algorithm. I took this from the forums. This is Heaters FFT, and it's a, it's a great piece of work, to be honest. This is a, a mailbox system, so you can copy an array of microphone samples into the FFT buffer, let it do its thing, and then within something close to 70 milliseconds, you'll get an FFT output, which is rather nice. There's been quite a lot of uh, research that's gone into this particular part of the project. Um, on the forums, there's a rather nice post by Phil Pilgrim. He, he's built a FIR, which is finite impulse response filter parameter for propeller assembler code, which is great. Basically, you can design your input filter and this will give you all of the coefficients that you need for it. And then run it through Phil's site and it'll generate an object for you which will do filtering. So this was ideal for my, my chosen application for, for my project because filtering is useful for reducing the higher frequencies and if you're just looking for low frequencies then higher frequencies can be detected as lower frequencies, it's called aliasing and you might get inaccurate answers. So let's have a look at what I've decided to build. So 
So you can see there's quite a lot of serial output there. So the idea is that it's taking microphone input and uh, doing an FFT on it and then I'm checking the array for the output for the specific notes that corresponds to the notes on the screen. This is the spreadsheet that I use to calculate the array offsets. So I've got D3 as, as note 0 on here and I looked for the center frequency note and the corresponding array value of it. So I went through and I picked basically the middle note for each of these and I looked for a particular threshold within that bin or, or array element. And so that's what's being displayed on the screen. If an array element has a value that's higher than a, a given threshold, then it will draw a line in that particular part on the screen. Obviously, uh, it's not the best in the sense that there's quite, quite clearly uh, errors on the screen when there's just random noise going on. But if we uh, try and be a bit, a bit quieter and, and actually use the kalimba on it, then I can show you exactly why I decided to build it like this. So you see what I mean about, uh, you can just play all over the place and it sounds pretty okay. Just alternating highs and lows and each finger. So this is the default range that, uh, of notes that I've decided to go for. So it goes from pretty much the lowest on the kalimba, B down here, uh, up to D, D6 I believe. There's quite a lot of tinkering that can be done with the, the objects that are included with this package. For example, we can change the range of notes being detected. As you can see, the stave has been offset further down and there's more space for notes above. So the highest note here, Glimber, you can actually go up a bit. So but you see it cuts off just above the top range. That's because this is sampling at 6 kilohertz, and my filter is cutting off all frequencies above 1.5 kilohertz. So that's why a lot of the higher notes are not being represented. And turn that off as well, and just change one of the constants, recompile it, and flash it onto the board, and then you can see that the higher notes will be detectable now. So. Yeah, it's, uh, it's good fun. So I had quite a lot of fun just staring at this after I got it working because uh, the idea originally was just to have as a note appears, sort of a bright white note and then slowly degrading down into colours. But the, uh, the way that the VGA object works is that there's a certain number of tiles on the screen and each tile can have two colours. So that's why at the moment it's just white on black. Just by going into the scrolling note GUI demo, I've got some of the other colour configurations saved, so just need to Go back to the top level objects, recompile it onto the board. So then we have black on white display, which is oh so so different. But just changing these these variables allows you to have different colours in each of the tiles. At the moment, what happens when it's doing the tile initialization is it goes through all these colourful ones first, and then afterwards I just blatted it with uh, the black and white on the, on the entire array. So if I if I comment both of these and allow just the colourful ones to go on. See if we can get a nice, nice little pattern. Nice little colourful bit. 
possibly not very meaningful in terms of actually uh, using it to figure out what note you're playing, but good fun to be had anyway. Let me play you one of the, the favourites that I have of mine. This, this is a, a piece that's quite famous in China. It's called The Butterfly Lovers. Yeah, enjoy. I'm just going to put the speaker there. Well, there you go. There you have it. That's my uh, project demonstration. Enjoy. <laughs>